Primary, primary neck, uh, position of control is off in the neck. You see in MMA all the time, it can be a hair grab, an ear grab, a shirt grab, it takes a lot of form. So I'm going to run through a few. The, one of the base concepts is that when you grab, an educated grabber is normally going to take the nape itself, which is all right because that's actually protecting the lever of the neck. If I have whiplash, what do I do? I put a collar right there. Makes my neck strong. So a lot of times you'll see like BJJ, they practice what's called base walking work. I get a nice brace position, you step back, pull on my neck. Well, we, we kind of do this dance. Yeah? And it's great for gi wrestling because I pull back with good structure. It begets problems when you can punch me in the face. So a lot of times when, when we were sort of developing the parlance for what we do, we got rid of the idea of form. Because form has always this notion of formality and properness and it's bad form in your hand when there's too much fear. Be relaxed, everybody's trying to be perfectly postured. But there's a best, we just say it's structure. There's a best structure for every context. If I'm getting punched in the face, that's not the best structure. It's not. Because your neck, you got a great neck, right? You got a nice big neck. But that's a long, skinny lever for me. If I get a hit from a guy that size who's got the advantage of aggression and he's deciding when the punch is being thrown and I take it, it's not better for this lever to be long and skinny. It's better to be like this. Otherwise, don't you think? Like everyone says, but it's so real, why don't you see the ring and this and that back in the argument goes back and forth, sport versus street. But there's no boxer in the world that would ever say there's no advantage for learning how to absorb a punch better. There's no one. They're getting paid dozens of millions in some cases. And it doesn't matter if you're like an Eddie Hutch kind of Joe Frazier like that or a Mayweather. They still shorten the neck when they're absorbing and roll with the shoulder. There's a really good clip on Mayweather they did on like TSN in the US. They talked about the number of times he was hit early in his career versus middle versus recently. And they showed how it's increasing slowly because you know, he's in his 30s and the age is going and he's, he's not as fast. But they talk about when he gets hit now, even though he's getting touched and before he was never getting touched, he's getting no force because he's riding. He's a little slower, but he's riding the punch, which is exactly what stem is all about. You know, so look at this guy who's doing it against real world punchers that are trying to kill him. Maybe more to watch as a fighter, maybe some people don't like him, but you see the way he rolls, and that's got to be short, it's got to be a lever. And most of the Slavic work, when they look at that, that initial sort of face adjustment absorption, most of them talk about you know, naturally yielding and moving the face to the side. But the guys that are doing it well are always supporting it with the shoulder naturally, because they're getting hit a lot, they're just compressing that knee. Then you see a lot of students, they're not because they're not specifically saying, they're trying to look static concerned with their posture, they're getting hit so cognitively that they're getting a walk, they don't know why. Shorten your lever. Even if you don't heal, which is the goal, you want to heal. If I took a shot like that, that's better, yeah, than taking a shot like that. <laughs> it's physics. It's not a question of opinion. Put a glove on, punch twice. If you can't feel a ten huge tangible difference right away, there's a problem with your turn. Yeah? I want that to be short. So if he grabs my neck, it's great to say that's ideal structure. That's ideal form. If I'm on the walkway, hook on the head, tongue against the palate, it's perfect. Yes, I'll get more mechanical strength here. But if he hits me, now with that hand anviling my head, it's a bad day for me. My, my neck can't move fully, so it's only going to be one or two vertebrae. Yeah? So even in that position, first thing I want to do is that. I, have, I should be aware of where my hands go here. It's the first thing. And your first point of contact is not any of it, it's this. In shortening, that's your first point of contact. Yeah, yeah, be strong. I mean, yeah. So often, when you do a nape, you should be on the base of the neck, right here, on the base of the skull, rather. So you have a mat, you're at the end of my lever, and that elbow has to be a fulcrum. So now he's trying to get that going on. It's bad for me, yeah? If I try to fight that, you know, you see the system of form drill. It's great if you're trying to get back to an ideal before getting knocked out. I know it's a little yeah? Well, why would you do that if he's punching you in the face? You're already fucking there. You're going to be here. You're going to be there, right? Now, this is the of thought that do I, am I going to try it inside? You see guys in MMA all the time, right? You should think. Again, people think, well, pressure testing. Pressure testing is going to solve it. Not necessarily. Because if you never debrief after the fact, you're just going to talk, you know, do what I was taught and say, well, I'm, I'm sucking at this. I better do it more. And what, what do most guys do when they're in this? They pull inside. And he goes again, we're going to arm wrestle in the middle of a fist, but he gets inside and he wrestles. And they compete. That's the least efficient way to move. Because his pec is a much larger, larger range of motion, stronger muscle than the flexors on his 
this rhomboid and the scapula that are pulling you back. I don't have a great range of motion here. I have a huge range of motion here. Your bicep is way more comfortable, way more familiar than the tricep. Your radial flexor is way more capable and used all day long than your sort of support flexors in the forearm. So I'm not going to use all three of my inferior muscles to fight all three of his superior muscles. It's not going to work. Can I think level one? No, 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 that'll solve it. Try it out. Go get a Muay Thai guy, double plumb, come up the middle, and Moses all day long. See what happens. That's happen. You're not going to get in there. So what I want to do is I want to say, look, where's he deviating me? Where's he deforming me? And, and I should be addressing that, whether I'm shielded or shielded or here. And I want to use the structure of my body from the shoulder to push that out. That's the first thing I'm looking at. My hands want to facilitate it. So it's my choice. I can pull it. I can bridge it. Some guys will pop it. Some guys will drive it here. It's, it's whatever you want. But if he's in there strong, the most common one is I come up as high as I can with a monkey hand, and I shrug it off. That's what I want to do. So even if he's nice and strong, I can, I can push and I can bridge that off. If it's more comfortable, I can use that to help. I can use both together. I can rip. I can go. But he wants to be strong on that. If you try coming inside to out, try coming inside to out. He's just going to pull you down. That's what happens when your head goes down. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but he wants, that's where you go. He's trying to get you to the floor. Right? So you don't, if you try to correct your posture, it's not good either. Okay? So stay strong. Yeah, and see, naturally, if I'm drilling, you have to push, then slip. Yeah, you gotta shrug, 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 shrug. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Keep going, 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 Look, it's taking it off. And once I have that motion, by all means, that can be a punch. Because the structure is limited. I want to be away from your fists. I'm a big fan of the Irish handshake. I'll step on your foot first. Boom! Boom! Grab right? As soon as I start doing this, now I'm wrestling. I don't want to wrestle. I want to hold you. I want to take you off and get here. The groin can face right away. Rip it off and get to the back. Don't volunteer for the wrestle. Try it. Again, if he grabs you like that, it's not on the neck, on the nape, my shoulder's gonna beat you. You gotta get the base of the skull, because now I'm getting deformed. Now it sucks. Now there's that, there's that going on. So if you feel obliged to fight with the arm, this is two-dimensional force. Straight path. Screw the arm. At least. I can even work if I like ripping, right? Look, if I try to pull, you see a lot of guys teach palm. And they pull. The problem is it's two-dimensional, and the cushion slips. Come up like you're hitchhiking with the bone, so that doesn't slide. Screw. It's off. Yeah? Doesn't matter where you go. Look, you're here, and I screw. It's like that side, right? So don't, don't do this. A lot of guys do this. Look, if I do a pull-up on that, I'm going to start sliding. Because it's muscle, it's tissue. Just my bone. And it comes up like an elephant's trunk. And then look, I'm barely holding. Turn back. He's honestly holding me strong, and I go like this with my palm. It's not gonna happen because whatever I'm generating here, it's not making it to the hand. I swim with bone. That's where I want to be. And you're gonna get it. And if you use that structure, look, that's it. it's too tight. You're gonna crush. Make a little bit of space. It's all good. So I can, I can go here, so whatever I need to. And if you can do that, then by all means you can work. Yeah? So again, same thing here. Don't do this. It's three dimensional. Always. Always free. Always always. As an actual application, not so much, but what they would teach, the Rituzzi calls it like method ABC, and Kadashikov calls it one, two, three, and uh, they get all different, but we just teach low frame, high frame, and everything in between is middle. Yeah, that's middle frame. So the chicken wing action is middle, that's high, that's low. And rather than remember numbers or letters, I can do low on the close side or on the far side. I can do middle on the close side or the far side, like around. 
and I can do high and the close side or the far side. So when we have high work, I can always go over, obviously, right? Either one, but I can also blend. So you can, most people always practice that. High frame blend and then they work. But there's a lot of value just as an exercise. I wouldn't do it against the punch. They, they prescribe it as a punch and things like that. Touching far side and then practicing coming around. It's great for your shoulder. So we do a lot of a lot of drills where the guy will just stand with a fist, hard arm, and a focus stick. And we just practice getting over like that. Because there is there is a point where that motion is quite good. Similarly, you'll see in, uh, in traditional elbow work, they, they have close side elbow, and then they have far side elbow. And again, it's not a matter of, am I going to really take all that time to come around? It's about shoulder mobility. Because sometimes I see there's a guy there, but there's also maybe a second guy there. So instead of hitting and putting him behind me as I address him, maybe I decide to drill this way to go. And it's great for your health. And for, you know, if I'm moving with my with a kettlebell, for example, I can do straight side shrugs. I can do far side shrugs. I can start to work in ellipses. So there's a, there's a tremendous value in doing all of it. But that's all that is really, is a far side shrug. That's all it is, except I'm doing it from here, and I'm going on the far side. So that range of motion is quite, is quite useful, especially when there's two or three guys, because then I can start to kick and go through. Does that make sense? So you can isolate that quite simply by seeing from that high frame, let's say I take a five kilogram weight, I can make rotations this way or this way. I can go far side. This way or this way. And there's quite a, quite a lot of application for power generation and pressing the function. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a few more. So, when we start to get into double plumb, right, we know that on the single, I want to have the base of the skull and not the neck. Because I want to pull that lever. I want to, I want to maximize my advantage as a lever. And then I want to usually have my elbow in there so I can drive, pull, and push. If I bring up my second hand, very few of us can get a perfect double. So one is kind of like a duck's neck or a crane's neck. The other one just closes. And so from that position, that's my strike hand, that's my try. I can close, I can switch sides and have a put a bow in my hand. Randy Couture made a career out of dirty boxing like that. It didn't look like much. Box like this, he clinched him, dum dum dum. But guys couldn't get past that arm. Good mechanics. And he was one of the first guys to really move from that to violating that, pulling it down, snapping at great power. So when I close it, the other one is just closing the door, just hanging. Now that second one can migrate over at any point. It can compound underneath. It can allow me to switch it under hook and pikes. It's very important. So when he gets that first one, the first one has to be strong. If he goes and tries to get, you know, beautiful, crazy, twisted form with both, he's going to make himself weak. If the second hand is closed to the door. So now I look, what can I do? All the same principles apply, but now it's much stronger because he's pulling me to the floor. So one of the first things you want to do is you do want to correct your form if he's too strong. Number one, be aware of where he's going to hit. He's going to usually use knees. So I'll touch the far side and ramp the close side. Do not do this. You see guys doing this. To me, this comes from a culture of holding pads. Right? This means I'm going to wait for you to generate maximum force and collide. <laughs> yeah? I want to go here. I want to be sure. Right? Yeah. You move my groin. That's what I want. I'm not using tremendous power. I'm just using that the recent discovery of the Renaissance, the ramp. I know the Egyptians had it too, but yeah, you, you might have heard of it. Did that make it here yet? Yeah. So I just want to be here nice. And then my other hand is free. So even if I'm going to work with hips or whatever, then go, oh, it's all from there. That's number one. Number two, when I change my line, lots of stuff that doesn't work on single does work here, and lots of stuff that does work on single gets harder. So like, for example, if, if I was shrugging, now this is kind of blocking the line. If I come over, not so much. So if I am going to shrug, what I'll normally do when I come under is I'll make a point of contact, and then first I'll, I'll try to weaken the other arm by ramping up. I'll ramp and make a hole through which I can pull it. As opposed to saying, I'm going to go here and just pull. Where do you so, Number one. So I'm going to hit, that's going to help right away. Sometimes when you ramp, you can push and take the back right away. Double strength, big strong double length. This one never works on single, but on double it does. Sometimes you're making space right up in the middle. So now it's harder for it to do those roundings over the top and whatever else. Right? And I'm shielded. But just this, I usually step, but I'm going to correct form and this push. And you push up. It's quite simple, that thing, yeah? And if you step here and you go a little, a little head spear into his face, just like that, this little shrunk gives you a lot of work. 
<laughs> and so I'm in that position, but without anything, I know I have to correct. So I'm hitting it, and I keep driving it up, and I come out. It's pretty simple. If, it's, if this is tight, you see it's quite heavy, it's hanging, then I'll look at this. I'll go under, and I'll, I'll look at levering one first, and then work my grip. If I was using that elephant swing, I take both. Yeah? If it's super strong and super flexible, you get flexible shoulders, he's tight, I'll make a shelf and I'll lean on it. Because he's not running at the bottom, so I'll just take a shelf and lean on it, and then I'll work. I'll usually shield against knees, I'll counter, and I'll come in with this. His next go to usually is going to be a release and go from my back. So that hand has to be alive, has to be active. Yeah? So all the same stuff works. I can look at, for example, if I'm shielding, I can feel the top hand, and I can work just with my elbow to get up. Then if I hit, everything changes. Yeah. When it's double, the notion that you're just going to go take it off, it's a minute. Because as soon as I feel any interference on my hands, I'm going to snap me down to something. Some guys will go guillotine, I won't. I'll go always face. Face lock neck, which is what we're going to do. It's a whole world of difference, because you do something wrong, you're cracked. Yeah. So when you're up there right away, shield, see that you're protecting against the legs first, Keep your head protected second, and then try all the same ones you did before, and see it's going to change. It's going to be little pieces of each one with this. Yeah.